Hi hey guys, when it comes to choosing a pet reptile, there's no absolute rules when it comes to which animals make the best pets. Well, what we're going to do today is we're going to compare two of the most popular pet lizards in the reptile trade at the moment, the Australian bearded dragon and the leopard gecko. We're going to show you a little bit about the basics of care and husbandry. Just come along with us as we compare the Australian bearded dragon and the leopard gecko. female leopard geckos. She only weighs about 52 grams and so if you're really not a big lizard type of person, the leopard gecko is probably the better pet for you. So this is Spike. He's our full grown male bearded dragon. As you can see, he's a lot bigger than leopard gecko. He's also 475 grams and unlike the leopard gecko, he doesn't really fit in the palm of your hand as well. He'd much rather just, you know, sit on your shoulder all day. <laughs> so if you guys like bigger lizards, something a little bit more, you know, step up from a leopard gecko, a bearded dragon is probably the perfect lizard for y'all. So uh, once you have uh, determined which of these two lizards you want, um, size is going to determine the type of aquarium that you're going to put them in. So for a leopard gecko, a small 10 gallon aquarium such as this right here is going to be sufficient to allow you to house your animal throughout its entire life. In fact, 10 gallon aquariums like this one, you should be able to house a pair of leopard geckos um, for, for their entire life. One of the things you're going to need, apart from your aquarium, is you're going to need a way for the animal to thermoregulate. They're going to need to have the ability to warm their body up and to cool their body off as they need. So one of the products that we recommend for a leopard gecko is an under the tank heating pad like this heating pad from Zoomed. Now, there's a lot of different manufacturers that make these, so you don't have to buy this particular brand. Uh, but just a heating pad and what you want to do is turn your cage upside down so that the bottom is uh, exposed. Take your heating pad and place it on one side or the other like so. Now the reason you don't want to put the heating pad right in the middle is because you want to, you want to develop a heat gradient where it's warm on one side, cool on the other. That way when you've got your lizard in the cage if he gets too cool, he can move down to this end of the cage, sit on the heat pad, he can warm himself up, and then when he gets sufficiently warm, he can go back to this side where he can cool himself down. Now, as far as the bottom of the cage, what you want to put in the bottom, there's a couple of different things that we recommend. They're maybe not as aesthetically pleasing as a natural environment cage, but something that's very, very easy to clean is, of course, just a white paper towel. We take the paper towel, take it out to the length of the cage that you need, tear it off, and just use this. Now, the benefit of your paper towel is that once the cage is soiled, it's easy to tell. It's easy to tell when your lizard has used the bathroom. All you have to do is take the paper towel out and discard it or throw it away. Now, some people also prefer to use, and we have from time to time, just simple newspaper. A newspaper, once again, it has the ability, you can just put it in the cage when it's soiled, you take it out, you throw it away. Newspaper has the benefits of being readily available, easy to acquire, it's cheap, in some cases it may even be free. Um, and you can use this also. Now, there are some people that like to use sand, there are some people that don't. Uh, when it comes to the internet, as far as what to use for cage bedding, Everybody on the internet is an expert on this, as you'll see in this clip right here. So what kind of bedding do you like to use for your leopard geckos? Well, I like to use sand because it... Sand? Oh, gee, you're going to kill it. What if it eats it? Well, it's not bad if you don't feed them on it. It's bad, honey. They're all going to die. Okay, how do you know that? I looked up on Google. Thank you, Wikipedia. And you're a professional scientist because of that? Yes. Now, if you excuse me, I'm going to go get some crickets for my iguana. Are you serious? So, we've got our cage set up. We've got our heat pad on one end of the cage. We've got something down here for a uh, cage flooring. Next thing we want to do is introduce our leopard gecko. And um, 
we'll put our leopard gecko in. Now, they do require something to drink, and uh, we'll cover a little bit more about food and diet in a, in a section coming up. But a small water bowl like this, uh, Exoterra water bowl here is sufficient. If you like something that looks more natural, of course you could also use a mayonnaise jar lid or something like that. Um, but if you want it to look a little more natural like these uh, rock look-alike bowls, of course those are absolutely fine. Now, a couple other things to consider about the leopard geckos. Leopard geckos are nocturnal species, which means they're active during the nighttime. Uh, for that reason, they don't need overhead heat like a heat lamp like the bearded dragon will. Um, but one thing they will appreciate in their cage is something to hide under during the day. Because leopard geckos are more active at night, they tend to shy away from coming out in the open during the daylight hours. So what they would appreciate is something like this cave, this rock cave. And what we like to do is place this on the warm end of the cage. That way our pet can actually hide in this rock while it's sitting over the heat pad. That way he can stay dark, he can stay hidden, he can stay out of sight. Once they find out that they have this, usually there's no problem getting them to go in it once they recognize the fact that they have it. As you can see here, they do prefer somewhere warm, somewhere dark. And so consider giving your pet something to hide in. It doesn't have to be fancy like this. We've seen people even use a cereal box turned over on its side, laying in the cage. Just something that the animal can go in, that they can feel comfortable, they can feel safe and secure. And then the final question is, should you have a lid on your cage? Now, the nice thing about leopard geckos is that they can't climb up the side of glass like some of your other geckos can. So for that reason, you don't have to have a top. However, we will tell you that if you have a cat or uh, maybe a nosy brother or sister or something like that, you might want to consider getting some type of top like this just to put over the top of the cage and that will keep out your cat or maybe your pesky younger brother or sister. Okay, so when setting up a bearded dragon, it's pretty much the same thing. Um, not a great deal of difference, except bearded dragons are a daytime animal, or they are diurnal, which means they're active during the daylight hours. So what we're gonna do here, again, you've got a choice between newspaper, paper towels. Just for example here, we're gonna use this piece of newspaper. Now, we're putting it in the bottom of our cage. This gives the animal something that they can soil when they need to go to the bathroom. But unlike the leopard gecko, who prefers a water bowl, you don't want to raise the cage humidity with a bearded dragon. Bearded dragons like the humidity to be very low. Around 30% is about as high as you want your humidity to get. Therefore, we don't recommend the use of any water bowls inside the bearded dragon cage. We want to keep our cage nice and dry and also warm. Now, one thing that they don't require is this under tank heating pad. Leopard geckos like the good warm belly heat. Bearded dragons, however, prefer a heat over the top of their head because they're active during the daytime. They're used to getting their warmth from the sun. So what we want to do is always use some kind of top over your bearded dragon cage. And you want to heat the animal from above and not from below. And the way we do that is with something like this light right here where we can plug it in. And again, you only want to heat one side of the cage or the other. Just place your light over the top of the screen, plug it in, and turn your light on. And then once it warms up, introduce your bearded dragon. Now, one thing you want to check for, and you can change this by the amount of wattage of your light bulb, you want your basking area to be around 100 degrees Fahrenheit. So start with maybe a 60 watt bulb, check your temperatures, if they're getting up to 100 degrees, then that's sufficient for basking. If they're not getting up that high, you want to raise the wattage of the light bulb. You may want to go up to a 75 watt, but if it's getting way too hot in that, in that heat spot, then you might want to go down a little bit. You can test your temperatures with different size, different watt light bulbs until you find the one that's going to work for your size cage. Now, obviously, in a 10-gallon aquarium, you're only going to want to house a baby bearded dragon in a 10-gallon. When you have an adult bearded dragon, we recommend at least a 40-gallon breeder tank as a minimum size for an adult bearded dragon. Now, I want to just warn you something about housing either of these animals. Never place two males of either of these species together. 
You can house one male alone or one male with several females, but you can never house two male leopard geckos or two female or two male bearded dragons together because they will fight, they will combat, and you're going to end up with some injured pets. So one male per cage, one male and one female, never introduce two males to the same cage. Bearded dragons are heated from the top with the lights. Leopard geckos are heated from the bottom with the heat pad. And that's pretty much it. Very, very simple. Now, the leopard geckos will appreciate something on the ground that they can maybe hide in. Bearded dragons, however, prefer something that they can climb on. So if you have anything for your dragon to climb on, it may be some vines, some limbs. Um, it could be something even as simple as this little piece of cage furniture right here. And this gives them an elevated platform, something that they can climb up on. Again, we want to put this on the warm side of the cage, put your top back on, put your light bulb back above the top. That way the dragon can climb up and get closer to the light if they want to. And uh, they just prefer something to climb up on. It could even be, again, climbing branches or whatnot will help keep your pet healthy and happy. And this is the reason why you don't ever house two male bearded dragons together in the same cage. Notice the behavior of the male as they bob their heads and they look. If we didn't have this glass separating these two lizards, they would be a full-fledged dragon fight right about now. So if you're housing multiple bearded dragons like we do here, one of the things you might want to consider utilizing is one of these plastic racks like this. Uh, this will allow you to house several bearded dragons on top of one another. And the way we do that is simply using these big plastic tubs. We place the light bulbs at the top of each rack like so. It hangs down into the cage and then underneath, directly underneath the light bulb, we use a ceramic tile. That gives them both heat from above as well as the tile will heat up. Uh, we keep our basking spots at about 100 degrees Fahrenheit and our bearded dragon, two females that we've got housed together here. Again, you don't want to house more than one male per cage. Um, and then as you slide your cage back in, if you'll notice, your basking light is right above your tile. So this is just an option as opposed to 40 gallon breeder tanks. You can use these larger uh, plastic totes stacked on a plastic or a metal rack like what you see here. So now that you have your cage set up, one of the things you want to consider is what you're going to feed your pet. Now, one of the things that we actually highly recommend when it comes to feeding is these little guys right here. These are called super worms. Now, several years ago, we fed our lizards crickets. And, uh, you know, a lot of people do. It's perfectly fine for either species to eat crickets. One of the things that we switched our animals over to super worms, and the reason is because these guys stay alive far, far longer than crickets. Most of you guys who feed crickets, you know, you go to the store, you buy crickets, you bring them home, and within three days, almost all your crickets are dead. Super worms, if kept at room temperature, will stay alive literally for months and months. So anytime you uh, want to feed either your bearded dragon or your leopard gecko, you just come in, you get a handful of these little worms right here, and you toss them into the cage. And uh, both species actually love these things. Superworms at one time and just have them readily available for your lizards. One of the things we do recommend is what's called gut loading. And what that means is you want to load the guts of your feeder insects with something that's very nutritious so that when your insects are eating this food, this nutritious food, and then your lizards eat those insects, the insects are carrying all those nutrients into the bearded dragon or the leopard gecko. And we do that with a product that we recommend that we also carry. It's called the Insect Buffet. Now, this is available on our website at www.coldbloodcreations.net or you can find this at any of the shows that we attend. And um, this is what we have in the bottom of this cage. 
This is what we feed all of our feeder insects and all the nutrition that's found in this product is then placed into the worms and then when your bearded dragon leopard geckos eat these worms then they're getting all the nutrients of what you've added into your into your gut load. Now when it comes to giving water to insects if you uh, put water in a bowl in one of these cages they're going to drown your crickets are going to drown so there's a couple ways to give them water one way we recommend over the other one thing you can do is to use potatoes sliced up now the problem with this is that the potatoes they dry out they begin to rot and they stink and no one wants their bedroom or their living room smelling like dry rotted potatoes so a product that we've been using for quite a while is these insect watering gels. Now again, these are available on our website. Basically what you do is you take a teaspoon of this, you put it into a jar, you fill the jar up with water, and it forms into a gel. That gel you can shovel out, put a little bit of that in a corner of the cage somewhere, and then your crickets and your worms or your roaches, whatever your feeder insect of choice is, they can drink the water from the gel. You don't have to worry about drowning. You don't have to worry about it rotting and stinking. So the insect water and gel is surely a product we recommend. And again, you can get it off of our website at coldbloodcreations.net. So something you want to consider is that leopard geckos are insectivores. That means that the leopard gecko diet is going to consist of insects, whether it's crickets, whether it's roaches, whether it's superworms, their diet is going to consist of insects. But however, the bearded dragon is more of an omnivore. Um, they'll eat both the insects, especially when they're young. When a uh, baby bearded dragon is young, their diet's going to consist of about 80% insects, but they also eat vegetable matter like mustard greens, collard greens, uh, kale, romaine lettuce, and once in a while for a snack, fruits and vegetables such as blueberries, strawberries, and, uh, and the like. So the bearded dragons, their diet's a little more varied. Now, as the bearded dragon matures and become adults, we actually cut back on the amount of insects. We feed them a diet that is about 80% vegetable matter and about 20% of the insects. So when they're young, 80% insects, 20% fruit and vegetables. As they become adults, we switch it around to the diet consists of 20% insects and 80% fruit and vegetables for our adults. Now for our breeding females, um, we use a calcium supplement. You can buy any uh, particular brand of calcium supplement. Some people use vitamin D3, some people don't. Um, we actually will use both. So any type of calcium supplement, sprinkle it on top of the insects and then feed them. That provides a little extra calcium for our females during the breeding season. One thing that bearded dragons need is ultraviolet light and they also need water. Now, we told you earlier that we don't put any type of water bowl in the cage with our dragons. But what we do is we bring them outside and we soak them out under natural sunlight in a Rubbermaid tub such as this with just a little bit of water in the bottom. Now, the reason why we do this is because it serves two purposes. Number one, being out here in this natural sunlight for about 20 minutes will give them all the ultraviolet rays that they need in order for their body to produce vitamin D3 and therefore to uh, metabolize calcium. Now, when they're young, the way that you can give them water, because they're gonna need to drink a lot more often when they're babies than they do when they're full-grown adults, is just a simple spray bottle like this. We mist the dragons right on the top of the head, and just that little bit of mist about twice a day will give them sufficient water without raising the humidity in the cage. Um, so, you know, when they're young, about twice a day with a spray bottle. When they get older, about twice a week, soak them outside, let them enjoy some good old natural sunlight like we have here today, and uh, that'll provide all the drinking water that your dragons will need. Now, I want to talk a little bit about handling. When it comes to handling these animals, one of the really cool things about both of these pets is that they're small, they're easy and very lightweight, they're easy to handle. Even a child would have no difficulty holding either one of these animals. We wanna warn you, you never wanna grab either a leopard gecko or a bearded dragon by the tail. And the reason with the leopard gecko is because the tail will break off of the leopard gecko, they will fall off, 
And uh, of course the tail will grow back, but it never looks as good. It never looks quite as pretty as the original. So don't pick up a leopard gecko by the tail. The thing with the bearded dragon, you never want to lift them by the tail because even though the tail will not break off, it is connected to the spine. You don't want to do any damage because you, you should probably know dragon backbones are very weak. They're very frail, so you don't want to hurt something as weak and as frail as a dragon's backbone. Hey guys, we appreciate you watching our video here comparing the bearded dragon and the leopard gecko. Uh, we hope you guys like our video, and um, if you do, leave us a comment down below and check both of these wonderful animals out. They both make great pets, especially for children and for first-time reptile enthusiasts. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe down below while you're at it, and we'll see you guys later. Thanks a lot. Weighing in at... <laughs> How much did that thing weigh in? <laughs> From the continent of Australia, jackass. <laughs> <laughs>